question number one on the solving quadratic equations quiz, uh, which was quiz number five, asked you to solve by factoring. And I'm obviously not going to work that actual problem for you. Um, <clears throat> you need to do the corrections yourself <coughs> so that you can do a retake. But um, I am going to work one that's basically identical to it. Um, so if I gave you guys a question, and this was actually a problem on the worksheet that we did that said solving in vertex or factored form. So if I asked you to solve this equation by factoring, the first thing that you would need to remember is that factoring requires that your equation is set equal to zero. <coughs> and so what you would need to do is you would subtract the 9 to move it to the left side and now it's set equal to 0 and and then just depends on what method you're going to use to factor the one that I've been showing you consistently um, because it's the less accident prone method is the grouping method and so what we do is we figure out what a times c is and we write down what b is. <clears throat> so a times c would be 2 times negative 9 which is negative 18 and b is negative 3. And then we ask ourselves the question what two numbers multiply to negative 18 and also add up to negative 3 and your answer would be negative 6 and positive 3 and what those two numbers tell us is they tell us how to split up this middle term. It's not telling us the numbers that are in the factors yet. So what we have to do is we rewrite our quadratic. 2x squared, we're going to take our middle term and we're going to split it up into two terms. Because if you remember when you FOIL, let's say that I gave you guys just another FOILing problem. Let's say I said FOIL 2x plus 1 times x plus 4. The first terms give you the quadratic term. So this first term in any given equation is just generated by the product of one pair of things. But <clears throat> this middle term is the result of both the outer and the inner terms being multiplied together. So if I came back over here to this additional example about foiling, the outer terms would give me plus 8x and the inner terms would give me another plus 1x and those are going to combine to give me a 9x so what we're doing is we're doing that process in reverse we are taking this middle term right here and we are splitting it back up into the two terms that generated it that combined and became it okay so <clears throat> those two terms are going to be I'm going to change colors so this stands out um, are going to be a positive 3x and a negative 6x and I can put them in either order. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the minus 6x first and the positive 3x next. Okay and now I can factor by grouping and so what grouping said to do is it said number one you had to have an even number of terms which we do now instead of three terms in our equation we have four. We group the first two and group the last two. And then the whole factoring part of it is just pulling out your GCF, your greatest common factor, three times. So the first time is going to be the greatest common factor of this first group right there. And that GCF is 2x. And it leaves behind an x minus 3. And then the second GCF that I pull out go ahead and switch colors again, is going to be the GCF from this group right here. And the GCF for that group is a positive 3. And it also leaves behind an x minus 3. And now what I have is this right here. This is one piece of my equation because the 2x is being multiplied to the parentheses, so they are attached to each other as one term. And this is the other chunk of my equation for the same reason. And those two chunks have something in common. They both have the x minus 3 in them. So I'm going to take that x minus 3, and the last thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to pull it out. It's my GCF. <clears throat> and so I pull out that last greatest common factor. And when I have removed it from this chunk, it leaves behind the 2x. And when I remove it from this chunk, it leaves behind the plus 3. And now the equation is factored. And once I've got it factored, remember what I told you guys that uh, the reason that it has to absolutely be set equal to 0 is because the reason that we can factor to solve is because of the zero product property. And it's not important that you remember the name of it, but what's important is that you remember that if a times b is equal to zero, so if two things multiply together and equal zero, then either a has to be equal to zero or b has to be equal to zero. It's the only number that is true for. And so what that means <coughs> Um, is that either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. And so the last thing you need to remember to do is to take those two factors and set them equal to 0 so you can solve them. And this one gives us a solution of x equals 3. And then this one I would have to subtract the 3 to move it over and then divide by 2. And so this one gives me a solution of negative 3 halves. So there's my two solutions to this quadratic. Okay, and that's exactly what question number one on the quiz asked you to do. Um, and you could have done the swing method or other factoring method itself, but that's the process is factor, set equal, or set equal to zero, factor, and then solve each factor. The second question on the quiz was also a factoring problem, but it was one that... Um, just gave you an equation that looked like this. This is also from that solving worksheet that we did. But once again, we've been told to factor, which means we have to set equal to zero first. So I subtract the 27x to move it over. And then this particular problem, all you have to do to factor it is pull out the GCF. Both this term and this term have a 3 and an x that we'll pull out of them. And what it leaves behind is an x minus 9. And just like that, it's already factored. And so the zero product property says that either this factor has got to be equal to 0, which means x equals 0, or this factor has to be equal to 0. So the solution would be x equals 9. And it doesn't even matter if I pull out the 3. When I took this equation right here, 3x squared minus 27x, and set it equal to 0, I could have chosen just to pull out an x. I could have left a 3x minus 27 behind. It's going to give me the same answers. Take this and set it equal to 0, and you still get x equals 0. Take this and set it equal to 0, and you just get 3x is 27, and you still get x is 9. <clears throat> but the important thing is that you have to pull the x out, but it certainly makes this factor easier to solve if you pull out the GCF, everything you can pull out of there. And that was the two factoring problems. And then there were two problems that asked you to solve <coughs> in vertex form. And one of them was already in vertex form for you. Um, so it is very, very similar. Let's find one. OK. It is very, very similar to question six on the vertex form worksheet. And all these problems that I'm doing actually come from the same worksheet. They come from the worksheet that says solving quadratics, vertex or factored form. So this is what question three on the quiz looked like. It was already in vertex form, and all you had to do was rearrange it to solve it. And so remember that um, we don't have to complete the square. It's already been done. We don't have to foil this out. We don't have to do any of that. We want to get x by itself. So we peel the layers. We just start moving stuff away from the x. So our first step would be to divide both sides by negative 3. And so we get x plus 2 squared is equal to negative 25. 
then the next thing that we would need to deal with is we cannot move this two. We can't do anything with that two until the squared is gone. So our next step is to square root both sides. And we have to remember to plus or minus when we square root. So over on this side, the squared and the square root will cancel each other out. And we'll just have the x plus 2. And then over on the right side, we have our plus or minus. The square root of 25 is 5, and the fact that it was negative makes it imaginary, so 5i. And then your last step is just to subtract the 2 to move it over. And so x is going to be negative 2 plus or minus 5i. And that's it. That question is solved. And so that's what you will do when you are correcting number 3, and that's what you do will do when you are retaking the quiz um, to redo a different version of number three. And then <clears throat> number four was a similar problem, but it's one you actually had to complete the square on. Okay, um, And so <coughs> the one that I want to look at um, is this one. It's number seven from the worksheet. So 4x squared plus 24x and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the 16 to the other side like it appeared on the quiz. This was how it was set up on the quiz. And I need to complete the square to put it in vertex form. Now, I've got a couple of options here. Um, on the quiz and on this particular problem on the worksheet, I want you to hopefully notice every single problem here, or every single term rather, is divisible by 4. I could take the whole equation and divide by 4 and simply reduce the equation. Okay, so if I reduce the equation, it becomes x squared plus 6x is equal to negative 4. And now I can complete this square with smaller numbers. Um, I don't have to worry about remembering a multiple when I'm balancing my equation. I don't have to remember any of that. So I'm, I'm going to work it for you that way. But then I'm also going to go back and work it for you the same way I worked it for you on the actual worksheet. Okay, so what we would do if we're working with this simplified equation is now we would complete our square and we would keep our equation balanced. Okay, and so remember that we take this middle term and we chop it in half, which gives us a 3, and then we square it. And so that tells me to put a plus 9 right there, which means I also need to put a plus 9 on the other side of the equation. Okay. And now everything that's over here on the left side forms a perfect square quadratic, and so I can factor it. And it factors as x plus 3 squared, and then everything on the right side combines to give me a 5. So technically all I've done so far is I've just rewritten my equation. My equation's in a different form, but now I can peel the layers away and get x by itself, because I couldn't do that in this form or in this form because there were two terms that had x in them. Now I don't. I only have one x. And so my next step would be to square root both sides. And of course plus or minus. And I have x plus 3 over here and I have plus or minus the square root of 5 over here. And then my last step would be to subtract the 3 to move it over. And so I get x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to actually repeat this problem the way that we did it on the worksheet. And you're going to see that you get the same answer either way. So if I repeat <coughs> this problem, um, 4x squared plus 24x is equal to negative 16. So the way that we did it on the worksheet is the way that we did it in the first unit. These two terms are technically a group, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 4 right there, and I'm simply going to pull it out in front, and I'm going to leave it written like this. Now, when I pull a 4 out, it pulls it out of this term and this term, so this becomes a 6x, and I leave a blank to complete my square, and then I still leave a blank to keep my equation balanced. Okay. And now I complete my square, and I get the same number right here. I still get plus 9, but I don't put a plus 9 over here. And the reason that I don't do that 
is because everything in this set of parentheses right here is being multiplied by the 4 out in front of it. It's all being quadrupled. So what we really just did to the left side of our, our equation is we really just added 36 to it. So I'm going to add 36 to the right side of my equation to keep it balanced. Okay, and now I'm ready to rewrite my equation in its vertex form. And so I have my 4 out in front. I haven't done anything with it yet. My parentheses now still factor as x plus 3 squared. Same thing. But now my constants on the other side add up to 20. But what's going to end up happening is that your very first step is going to be to divide by 4. That's the very first layer you're going to peel away from your x. And so you're going to have your x plus 3 squared. And sure enough, guess what it ends up being equal to? 5. And then your last two steps are the same as with the simplified equation. You square root both sides, and you still get plus or minus the square root of 5, and then you subtract the 3 to move it to the other side. So you still get the same answer either way. It really is just a matter of how confident you feel um, in your completing the square process and whether or not you want to work with a reduced or simplified equation. Okay. Um, if you're going to group these two terms together and simply pull the 4 out in front, you can't pull it out of the 16 too. The 16 is not in the group with them. Okay, The 16 is off on its own. And that is one of the most common reasons I saw people miss that on the quiz. Okay, And then question 5 and 6 went much more quickly. Question 5 was just a discriminant problem. So... Um, we, we've talked about the discriminant on a couple of different worksheets, but <coughs> if I took one from the actual worksheet called discriminant, it was the P7 worksheet on discriminants. So if I picked one of those, um, let's say I picked number three. Okay, so y equals... 6x minus x squared minus 11. And the reason that I picked number 3 from that worksheet is because our equation is out of order just like it was on the quiz. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to put it in order. You need to know correctly what is A, B, and C. Okay? And so this quadratic, what it should look like is negative x squared plus 6x minus 11. Okay? And that means A is negative 1, B is positive 6, and C is negative 11. Okay, and so question 5 on the quiz just wanted the discriminant. And the discriminant is just the B squared minus 4AC. So just to remind you guys, just to refresh your memory, um, the quadratic formula as a whole says X equals negative B, oops, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And it's this right here, the number underneath the square root that tells us the number and type of solutions we're going to have. Okay, so for this problem right here, I just want to know the number and type of solutions that it would have. So I plug b, a, and c into the discriminant. So if b is 6, then b squared would be 36 minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is negative 11. Okay, and so I have 36. <coughs> I have three negatives multiplying together, so it's going to stay negative. And 4 times 1 times 11 is 44. And 36 minus 44 is negative 8. Okay. And since this is a negative number, that means I'm going to have two complex roots. So if you'll recall um, from our notes and from our practice problems, um, when your discriminant is negative, you have two complex numbers because that means that you would be doing a square root of a negative up in the quadratic formula. When you have a zero, Inside the square root, when your discriminant is zero, you're going to have one real root. And when it's positive, you're going to have two real roots. 
And that's all you had to do on number five was just the discriminant and the number and type of uh, solutions. Okay? And then the last problem on the quiz asks you to actually solve entirely um, with the quadratic formula. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and just pick one from the... Um, from P7 again, just because that way you don't have to dig through too much of your stuff again. So I'm going to choose number 12 from P7, okay? And so we're going to be solving 12x equals 9x squared plus 1. Okay, and just like before, I need to get this equation arranged correctly. So I'm going to take the 12x and subtract it to move it over. And I'm going to write it in order. I'm going to put the minus 12x in the middle, the way that it belongs. And so that means that this number right here is my a, this is my b, and this is my c. And so now the quadratic formula says x equals, okay, I'm going to go ahead and write it out again. I know it's a bit repetitive, but I just want to make sure since I've already um, switched screens that you guys can actually see which variables get replaced with which numbers. Okay, so <clears throat> b is negative 12, so negative b would be positive 12, plus or minus the square root of. If b is negative 12, then b squared is 144, minus 4, times a, which is 9, times c, which is 1. Okay, and it's all over 2 times a, which for us, a is 9. And so what we have is 12 plus or minus the square root of. And then what PEMDAS says that we would do first is we would do this multiplication right here. And 4 times 9 times 1 is 36. And 144 minus 36 is 108. And it's over all over 18. And the square root of 108 is the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. And of course the square root of 36 is 6. So at this point what we have is we have our 12, we have plus or minus 6 square root of 3, and it's all over 18. Now technically the problem is solved, but we have asked you guys to simplify your answers completely. And so what I want you to notice is that all three of these are reducible by 6. A 6 will divide out of all of them. So that will cancel this out. That will reduce this down to a 2 and reduce this down to a 3. So your final answer is 2 plus or minus square root of 3 all over 3. And so that's what you should have done on question 6 on the quiz on solving. Okay, so I'm hoping that this helps you understand the methods uh, that you would have used to solve all of these problems on the quiz so you can do your corrections over the weekend. Um, and I'll be there Monday morning if you guys want to come see me and get that retake taken care of. Um, but my primary concern is making sure that you understand your mistakes and that you won't make them anymore so that you can do well on Monday's test. Thanks and have a good weekend.